Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, we're getting started on the prototype of the 12X7 EL34 production amp. I'm going to be using what I know are reliable, good sounding components, and I'm trying to figure out the best way to lay everything out that makes the most sense. And, you know, I kind of started in one direction, and may end up going a little different direction. I'm still waiting on a few parts to get here. This is going to be different than my personal builds, because on my personal builds, the fairly hot running cathode resistors I've always put on the top of the chassis, but there's exposed electrical connections on the top of the chassis. And even though this EL34 doesn't have a really high voltage on the cathode like a 300B might, it's still over 12 volts, which kind of is the threshold of what they consider, you know, to be safe around people to touch. And I don't want anybody getting shocked and or even being just scared of the product because of that. So we're going to be putting the cathode resistors inside the amp. I've got some little ventilation screens I found that I think look really cool that'll help ventilate that heat to the top of the chassis so we don't cook these capacitors that are inside it, which is important. I'm also using fairly high temperature rated capacitors so that you know they will have a long life and I'm oversizing them so we really shouldn't have any issues with capacitors having a short life or failing. So anyway let's get into looking at laying out the power supply and how I think the heater wiring is going to be laid out and then you know kind of looking at the best practice or the best way of laying out the power tube wiring and we're going to get all that wired up first and then we're going to do the input tube after we get the power tubes wired up powered up biased up make sure the current's all within you know the specs that we want to see and that all that's working right so let's get busy working on this amp okay so Here's the first stab at doing the power supply in this amplifier. And the first thing I like doing is getting as much of the wiring out of the way as I can. So the first thing we did was we hooked up the outputs of the output transformers, which go to these speaker jacks across the back. And that cleans up that little bit of wiring. And here are the primary wires. That's the positive, that's the plate, that's the screen, or the ultralinear tap. We're going to hook those up after we get some more of this wiring done. But I was focusing on this wiring over here. So we have three wires that have to be connected to ground. One of them is the center tap for the 6.3 volt heaters. The other one is this wire down here. And I was initially thinking I was just going to put a little contact cement, kind of glue it over in this corner down here. That's the center tap again for the high voltage. And it goes to the ground. And then we need to ground this side of this cap. And we also need to ground this side of the cap. And so connected these two terminals together. The power comes up here to the rectifier tube. These are the plates of the rectifier tube. And then the heaters connect to these two pins. And then pin 8 is where we pull the DC off of the rectifier tube. And it goes to this 22UF solene cap, which is the first cap after the rectifier. And then this lead here goes to the top mounted choke. And then the other side of the choke comes over here. But after looking at this, I'm thinking, why am I pulling three ground wires down to this end of the amp just to keep this wire short going to this cap. And I do like the way the caps are laid out. These clamps just lightly clamp these capacitors on this solene cap. This is a 40 millimeter rubber insulated clamp. You want to 
bend these and form this as round as you can so that when you tighten up this nut it's not like clamping down on the capacitor because these things do not like being crushed I found that in my 300B amp it ended up shorting it out internally so you want to make sure that this just lightly is clamping it and somebody warned me or told me that it's better to do it on one end than in the middle that there's some more physical strength there so we're going to clamp it down on that end so I like the way this cap is I like the way this cap is this is a fairly large reservoir cap it's a 470 UF 450 volt since we've only got one choke stage of filtering I wanted to put a pretty big reservoir cap that's going to help smooth the ripple and we're using a really small relative size cap as the first cap to make it easy on the rectifier tube so anyway like I said I'm looking at this layout and it seems kind of silly that I'm pulling all these grounds across the amplifier why not just put the ground terminal back here let me got to turn the amp up Put that ground terminal down here and then just have a really short jump over from here here and here for three of these grounds and then the only one that we have to pull across the amplifier is going to be the negative for this cap and it can just run straight up and down to there so I think I'm going to redo this and you can see I ground the paint off here to get a good ground for my star ground point. I'm going to paint this little spot. We're going to probably still use a terminal strip here. Maybe use a three terminal one. It goes this way that has two, you know, ungrounded ones that way. And just not connect that ground to anything right now. And then move this three terminal ground thing up here and tie all three of them together so I've got a little ground bus and then you'll have a lot shorter path for these ground leads and it'll just kind of clean up the inside of the power supply I mean I was you gotta start somewhere and I you know I was thinking hey this looks pretty neat but then when I step back and look at it, it just wasn't super crazy about that here are the power leads they're gonna go to the IEC connector then we're gonna have the power switch up here in the front the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a terminal strip like this, cut it right there. So we just got these three, bolt it down here, and then put the two heater wires, you know, twist them up like they need to be, and put them onto those two lugs of this little tag strip here. And then I can run the heater wires down like this across to this tube, daisy chain across to that one, and then run the signal tube by itself up here to these same two terminals, and that should power up the heaters. And don't feel like the heater is going to the output tubes or is critical about daisy chaining them or any kind of noise getting generated doing that, but I don't want to run the small signal tube off of these. I mean, I guess I could pull these up here, but it's probably better to run it across here and up and keep it away from this area right here where the signal's going to be going between the driver tube and the output tubes. And then the positive voltage can come across here, you know, at 90 degrees to the heater wires and maybe, you know, up an inch or so, so that we don't have any interference between the B plus and the heaters. So... Let me move some of this stuff around. I'm going to move this strip up here, move these ground wires around, create like my positive connections down here, and come back and show you what that looks like. The other thing I was going to show you is like the start of the... Let me get these wires out of the way. The other thing I was going to show you is the start of how I'm going to do the cathode resistors for the output tubes. And again, normally I mount them on top of the chassis, but for this production amp, they think they need to be inside away from people's hands. And so I got a couple of these 10-watt 500-ohm resistors, 
put some high temp black paint on them so you won't see them through this little grill and I'm planning on mounting them something like this cross between those two tag strips like that and I was really hoping that these had longer leads on them and they were maybe a little beefier leads that's a pretty small little wire on them but it's just hard to find really high quality parts nowadays I've got some other ones ordered on eBay that are some new old stock ones that maybe are a little you know higher quality than these are but the main reason I wanted to go with these cement ones rather than the metal ones that bolt down is these are made to run in free air like this. And so you can mount them without, you know, being attached to something and just have convection cooling on them. And then the other one will sit in here kind of like that and have the two of them right next to each other like that. And then they'll be over this little vent here so that the air can circulate over them and probably drill some holes in the bottom of the chassis or the bottom cover right here so the air can come up over and right through those. And then on this end, I'll probably drill some holes like over in here in the bottom of it so it'll help kind of cool this area you know, maybe even along this edge here. So it'll help keep these capacitors cool and then convection can come out through this vent. But mainly I wanna make sure, this is where the heat's gonna be, that it's right over this vent so that the heat goes up and out through the top of the amp. And then we'll figure out how we're gonna put the cathode bypass. Capacitors are gonna be here on the outside away from those resistors so that they're not exposed to that heat. Anyway, that's kind of the way I'm looking at laying this out. So let me move this ground over here and kind of redo this stuff and start figuring out how I'm going to wire up these output tubes because that's going to be the first step is to get the output tubes with the cathode resistors in place and then we can power the amp up and check the bias and the current running through the output tubes and given that they're going to be the majority of the current draw in the amp, we'll be able to get a accurate reading on what our B plus is going to be like and make sure that all the voltages are where we want them to be. So, like I said, let me move this ground stuff over here, kind of redo this little tag strip here and redo some of this wiring and come back and show you what that looks like. And go ahead and get these heater wires kind of rounded up here and come back and show you what that looks like. Okay, so I moved some things around and we changed this little tag strip. I actually took a five terminal one like this and cut it right there and then folded this over and soldered it to itself to strengthen up this mounting point because we're not going to be using this as ground. We have the output of the choke looped up and took to this terminal and these two are connected together here and then this comes up to the positive of this big filter supply cap and then we have the one ground lead coming over to our new ground strip over here on this end of the amp let me you can see it's here with the paint removed so it gets a really good connection to the chassis and we have the ground for this big filter cap. That's the first one in the power supply. This 22UF film cap goes to the ground. We have the center tap for the 6.3 volt heaters also brought here. And then we have the center tap from the high voltage windings also coming over to this ground point. So this is going to be like our star ground point back here in the back of the amp. We did the same thing with this tag strip. We cut a five terminal one into a three, folded this over, soldered it to itself. And then here are our two 6.3 volt windings for the heater. These are gonna come over and then come to this tube and then to this tube. And then another pair will come down and go to the input tube. So over here on the output tubes, 
thought this turned out really nice. Again, I'm not going to be using this ground terminal. So we folded this over, encrypted it, and then soldered it to itself to strengthen up this endpoint. Then this terminal and this one are going to be where the cathode resistor goes across here. This is going to be our ground point, and then the other cathode resistor will go here. And that separates them a little from each other, but also keeps them over this vent here so the heat can exit through the top of the amp. This is our V plus voltage going to the output transformers, and it's also tied together across here. And I'm using some heavy gauge solid copper wire to kind of strengthen up these strips as well to give them some physical strength and then the upper transformer positives connect here and here then we just run a wire i just kind of get these stuck to the tubes for right now and then this will go from here over to this point to get our b plus or positive dc voltage to the output transformers and then the wires for these Output transformer leads to the plate and the screen. We'll just come over here and attach to these two terminals here. We'll stick this back through there to keep it kind of neat looking. They're just going to attach here and here, and then this is the plate. And these are the heaters. And the cathode will, which is this terminal right here. Let me go ahead and get these out of the way so we can kind of see this other wiring better. So then this cathode is going to hook to this terminal, and then this will be connected to ground with the cathode resistor across here. And then the cathode bypass cap can sit right here going across these two terminals. And then on this end, this one will attach to here with a resistor, connect to ground, and then the cathode bypass cap can go across these two terminals. It'll sit over here. So I think it's going to lay out really neat. It'll keep the cathode bypass capacitors away from the heat of the resistors and I did some more research on the cathode resistors and I was originally going to use these little cement resistors that I found but it's got such a tiny little lead on here I think that's a 22 gauge wire and of course it's just some made in China junk and I should have known better and I thought at first I could solder you know a nice thick copper wire to it and then paint them black so that you wouldn't see it through the, you know, little grill here. But the more I looked at this, it's like, it just looks like garbage. I can't, I can't put that in these amps. And so that's going in the trash. So I ordered a set of Vichy 10 watt, 500 ohm, you know, nice resistors. And I'll show you what those look like when they get here next week. Again, this is going to take a little while to really figure out how I want to lay this out because if I'm going to be building a bunch of these I want to make sure that the layout's really done nice and that we're using high quality parts probably going to use a little nicer cap in this position I see that Nikicon makes an audio grade one that's 105 degrees Celsius rated so we're probably going to be you know using a different cap on the actual production amps for this position and we are going to use this solene cap here. I really like this power supply layout. I think this is going to work well. So the next thing I'm going to do, probably be in the next video, I'm going to show the heater wiring, how I'm going to lay that out. Hopefully by then I'll have these resistors here. I need to figure out how I'm going to do the grid supply for the output tubes. And I think I'm going to do something like putting a five terminal strip here and then have this terminal as a ground or this one I'm not sure yet which one I'm going to use doesn't really matter and then have the grid leak resistor go from here to here and then have the grid stopper go from here to here and then this will be where the coupling cap can connect and then on the other end of this tag strip, we could pull the positive voltage from here over to here, put a resistor from here to here, 
and then we could attach the decoupling capacitor from this ground point over to the voltage and then we would have the plate supply or the B plus for the input tube right here on this tag strip that would be could then pull over to this tube and maybe put a couple of these I think there's going to be room to put a couple of five terminal strips on each side of this to then hook up you know all the wires that are going to go to this tube this is going to get a little crowded around this tube which is pretty normal but I want to go ahead and get the heater wiring in place but I need to you know probably you know mount this tag strip where it's going to be so I can run the heater wiring up and around you know so it doesn't get tangled up with this tag strip so I need to figure all that out but first thing I want to do is get the output tubes wired up get the cathode resistors in the bypass caps you know get the output transformers all connected up to these tubes you definitely got to have the grid leak resistor in place when you power up this tube or it will red plate and go nuclear it's got to have a reference to ground on the grid you don't have to have the coupling cap hooked up between the driver tube and the output tube but you've got to have this grid grounded through a resistor before you power up the output tube so that's kind of the next step is to you know wait for these resistors to come in start wiring up the heaters and then you know the last step is going to be figuring out how to wire up this driver tube as neatly as possible and keep the signal clean and then the RCA jacks are over here on the side and these wires are going to run up and over to the tag strips for the driver tube and then if someone does want volume control then these would just run up here to the volume control and then over to the tube so it would basically have the same path for the wires it would just be whether or not the buyer wants to have a volume control or not and then the other thing too and I'm probably going to go ahead and do this before these resistors get here I need to wire up the IEC socket it's going to be back here in this corner and then these are the wires that go up to the transformer the, the two AC wires and then in the front here we have the angel eye on off switch and then it has a little plug harness thing like this one of these wires I'm not going to need so I'm going to pull it out of the plug but then these will run along this edge here back to the switch you know along this upper edge or maybe even down here I haven't decided yet and then I'm gonna have to run the DC for the indicator light off of the 6.3 volt and I know it's kind of overkill but I always use a small bridge rectifier with a filtering capacitor so I have filtered DC going to the LED on the power switch to give it as long a life as possible and to eliminate any possible flickering I know that would drive people crazy if it was you know out of your peripheral vision the little LED was flickering at 60 Hertz I know it would drive me crazy so we're gonna be doing that off of the 6.3 volt wiring once we get that all done up and probably gonna run that DC just around in the back and around the back of the amp instead of running it across here but it really wouldn't matter either way so anyway that's probably the next thing is go ahead and wire up this power switch get the heaters wired up and I think this is probably a good place to wrap up this video and I'll show you how I do the power supply wiring switch and all that and the heaters in the next video so let's wrap this up here so we did make a few changes on how we were laying out the power supply and as soon as the cathode resistors get here I can start wiring up the output tubes and getting the power supply connected to the output tubes get them biased up and see what all that's going to look like and the best way of laying out that wiring I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible and I've said before in these build videos I'm showing you this as I'm working along and kind of my thought process this is not the final layout and so if you're wanting to jump ahead of the game and be like 
buying parts and mounting stuff and start soldering stuff up like I'm showing you. As I go along, things can change. And I may go, you know what, that didn't really work out like I thought. I'm going to move this stuff over here. Or I'm going to change where this stuff is located. Or, you know, got to listen to the amp too. And that's one of the reasons that I'm kind of building this first prototype with these Edcore output transformers. Because I know what they sound like. And these 5K ones tested working really well with these EL34 tubes. I do have a pair of these musical power supply ones we're going to try on the second prototype and then going to AB listen to them with the same tubes and make sure of which one of these sounds better and there's a little money to be saved using the Edcore versus the musical power supplies. Matt may make me a deal if I'm buying quantities of these but the difference between the two is not a lot. It's not like the price difference would be if I was going to some ISO Tangos or something like that, which may do in the future. I'm going to use the Hammond Power Transformers. I'm happy with those. And I think this hammer finished bronze paint looks really good. I'm going to have to paint like you can see these are silver. I'm not going to leave them like that. And the Ed Core ones are blue. And so the end belts need to be painted to match anyway. I did my 6SQ7 EL34 amp with all black iron and while it looks okay I think this hammer finish looks a lot nicer and it's not much harder to apply it takes a couple of coats to really get a nice finish on it and so you really need to put two coats of any spray bomb on stuff like this I'm also going to get some black oxide hardware because I think the black hardware looks much nicer it just kind of disappears into the amp versus the silver stuff it comes with and so there's going to be a little bit done to the aesthetics I'm not going to just kind of hodgepodge bolt stuff down but I don't want to spend too much time and money on you know dolling it up either it's going to stay pretty basic looking and I think I've said in an earlier video it's going to be a smaller Skunky Designs nameplate down here on this side and if the customer wants a volume control then that'll get moved over to the middle and the volume control the matching color knob will be put right here so gonna be selling them this first batch I don't think I'm going to get involved with the whole ultra linear triode switch or switchable you know feedback settings and that kind of stuff I'm just gonna dial this thing in as a good sounding ultra linear amp and the first batch of them are going to be sold like that. So anyway, let me let the parts get here for these output tubes. We'll wire them up in the next video. We'll power the amp up. We'll check the voltage on the cathode and the plate of the output tubes. They're the main current draw. And so we can kind of see if all the voltage and everything works out like we expect. And then we'll start working on wiring up the input tube and see what this thing sounds like. So, hope you're enjoying this series. If you are, please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video. Thanks all you Patreon supporters. I really appreciate you guys. Plus you folks that make donations to the website. Appreciate that as well. And until the next video, have a nice day.